Are you struggling to keep external CRM or legacy databases in sync with Salesforce? Most businesses need to integrate systems and pull in external data to get the most out of their Salesforce instance. Salesforce Connect may be the solution you're looking for. Let's dive in to see what Salesforce Connect offers, reviewing the benefits and the drawbacks to see if it's the right solution for your integration needs. We'll also do a quick walkthrough of the Salesforce Connect setup. Before we do, please take a second to subscribe to our channel, Salesforce Explorer. We explore what is possible inside Salesforce to make you more effective in everything you do. I'm sure you're familiar with standard and custom objects in Salesforce, but have you heard of external objects? External objects are like custom objects, but they define objects that live outside of Salesforce. When we create an external object, we define that external connection to where that object's data is stored. Several adapter types allow us to make these connections. First is cross org. This is where we access data between Salesforce orgs. We use the Lightning Platform REST API to move data from one Salesforce instance to another. OData is a popular REST-based protocol that allows Salesforce to use OData queries to access external data through external objects. Apex Custom Adapter uses the Apex Connector framework to get data from data sources. Custom code using a Salesforce's Apex language is used when we trigger specific functions. AWS DynamoDB provides adapters for us to natively access data in the AWS cloud. We can also use GraphQL to work with Amazon RDS via AWS AppSync. Salesforce Connect Adapter for SQL allows us to access external data sources that are exposed via REST APIs and offer query operations using SQL. We can tap into Snowflake and Amazon Athena using this adapter. Once our external object has been defined, it works just like any other object inside Salesforce. We can query it via SQL as well as Salesforce API. It's data also can appear in search results. As a native integration tool, Salesforce Connect has real benefits that make it a great option for real-time integration. First, since our data lives outside of Salesforce, we aren't pulling it in and risking duplication or redundancy. Also, we aren't getting the hit via increased storage costs within Salesforce. In a word, we can scale and handle large volumes of data from multiple sources. Next, we are creating a live and open channel to an external source system. So it allows us real-time access to that data. You're working with the external data source right through the Salesforce interface. Also, we have great flexibility in the use of this external data. We can read, write, update, delete external objects in real time. You're working directly with the data in its source location. We can open data to multiple Salesforce orgs to connect our teams and our departments. Lastly, we have a unified view of our data. We don't have to go searching through multiple systems to find what we're ultimately looking for. This can translate into productivity boosts within our organization. While the benefits are many, we should always consider the limitations before committing to a solution. First, Salesforce Connect is not a free feature. It is an add-on that comes at an additional cost of $4,000 US per connection per month. It's available with the enterprise performance and unlimited editions of Salesforce. I've included a link below to reference the add-on pricing, which of course can change over time. Salesforce applies OData callout limits of 20,000 times per hour. Salesforce can raise this limit upon request. This limitation also does not apply to cross org adapter callouts, though they do account against your API usage limits. This same type of approach applies to when we access AWS Snowflake and the GraphQL adapters. Also, there's a maximum new row retrieval or creation of 100,000 per hour. 
This limitation does apply, doesn't apply to high data volume external data sources. Also, we have a default prepackage of 100 external objects within your org. We can create a support case with Salesforce to boost this to 200. Lastly, there are some limitations inside using SOQL with external objects. First, the maximum number of joins per query across external objects is four. And each query forces a separate round trip to the external source. So we can expect delays if we have those heavily joined queries. The following aggregate functions, clauses, and operators are not supported. There are additional limits that apply to OData and custom adapters. And I'll post a link below for reference. Now, let's do a quick walkthrough of creating an external data source in Salesforce. First, let's go to the setup and search for external data sources. You'll find it underneath the integrations category. Next, click on the button for new external data source to get started. Now, we need to define the external data source, which will also auto-populate the name. Feel free to update this if needed. Select the type of connector you want to use. In our example, we're going to set up the OData 4.0 connector. Define the URL we're going to reach out to. We can also select options, like whether we want external objects to be writable. Lastly, we want to define the authentication identity type, the authentication protocol, and credentials if necessary. Once we hit save, our new external data source connection is live. Once we're ready to create external objects, we can click on the validate and sync to select the endpoint tables we want to sync. This video is brought to you by Improving. We're an IT consulting firm serving North America. If you need help navigating data integration in Salesforce, we'd love to have a conversation. Our brilliant team of Salesforce data engineers can find the solution that is right for you. Please reach out to us at improving.com. We look forward to talking with you. Thank you for taking time to explore Salesforce Connect with me today. If you enjoyed this content, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have great content planned for the weeks ahead, so we would love to keep you updated on when that hits. Until then, 